Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The word of God that we meditate on is taken from the gospel lesson, John chapter 6. We'll be rereading it verse by verse as we go along. Dear friends in Christ, if you have watched the Olympic Games over the last couple of weeks, probably one of the last things you think about is the food that was served at the Olympic Village. And yet, if you do a Google search, Olympic food, you'll find different articles and even videos of athletes weighing in on whether they liked it or didn't like it. In fact, there was one headline that came out from a British athlete that said that there were evidently some worms in some of the fish that was served in the Olympic Village. But let's dive a little bit deeper below the surface. Let's get beyond the food at the Olympic Games. How about the message that the Olympic Games send? Well, it's somewhat of a mixed message, I suppose, but during the opening ceremonies, a French singer sang John Lennon's famous song, Imagine. And the commentator noted that This is getting to be a regular thing at the Olympic Games. It's kind of like a theme song for the Olympics. Have you listened carefully to those lyrics? Yes, I guess in a sense there's there's some things that we might agree with from the fact that we do want peace, right? We do understand the message there that it wouldn't be great if everybody just got along. But the song totally throws away Christ. Listen to the lyrics, at least the beginning. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us. Above us, only sky. And with that picture, Lenin goes on to say, Imagine all the people living for today. Well, if you watch the Olympic opening ceremony, it's an entirety then you saw that the organizers of that opening ceremony took that line to heart. There was some Sodom and Gomorrah type behavior that was on display there for the world to see. Now don't get me wrong, I enjoy the Olympic Games, I really do. I love to see the competition, the top athletes from all around the world getting together. On the other hand, I hate the humanism that many in the Olympics try to promote, try to feed the world. And so I guess today, the words that we have in front of us from John chapter 6 can't be any more timely for that reason. Jesus wants us to be fed on something else, something totally different. When Jesus speaks here, He's going way beyond the physical food, certainly, and he's talking about spiritual food. He's talking about food that endures, food that lasts. Let's talk about the bread of life, and let's dive a little bit deeper into what Jesus is saying here. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. Let's take a moment and just remind ourselves of what just had happened. The day before this, Jesus had miraculously fed 5,000 people with five barley loaves and two fish. And now, after doing that, Jesus sensed, he knew that the crowd was going to come after him and say, we want you to permanently feed us, to be our bread king. And so what did Jesus do? He retreated to a mountainous region. His disciples, on the other hand, that night, got into a boat and started going across toward the city of Capernaum. But as they were going out, there was a great storm that came. And then they saw an odd figure walking to them on the water. It was Jesus. He climbed into the boat and immediately the the storm stopped and they got safely to the other side. 
Now, the crowd didn't know this. The crowd had no idea this was going on because it happened at night while they were obviously sleeping. But the crowd was still searching for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? The crowd was determined to find Jesus. And note what they said first, or what title they gave to Jesus first of all. It was Rabbi. A title of respect, to be sure. It meant teacher. So they meant him respect, and yet they far underestimated who they were looking at. They didn't think of him as the Son of God, let alone the Savior of the world. Although their question seemed very innocent, there was something behind it. In fact, you can almost hear the tone there. Where have you been? We've been looking for you. We're hungry. In fact, Jesus confirms that with his answer. He says, Amen, amen, I tell you, you are not looking for me because you saw the miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. The crowd did not take this miraculous feeding as some kind of evidence that Jesus is Son of God and Savior. No, not at all. The only thing they cared about was filling their own bellies. Can we be guilty of that too? Jesus does teach us, give us this day our daily bread. There is a place for that, certainly. But if we go down and think about the prayers that we pray, are they going to list things that are mainly providing us with a paycheck for tomorrow? Making sure our health is taken care of? Making sure that we're comfortable in our lives? Making sure that we have food? To the exclusion of other things? We need Jesus' reminder, don't we? Do not continue to work for the food that spoils, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Jesus was getting them to shift their focus here, wasn't he? Instead of thinking about filling their bellies, and taking care of their most basic needs, he wants them to think about their souls, something much greater, about their eternal welfare. The lyrics to Imagine make it clear that Lennon is only talking about this life and this life alone. You and I have such a wonderful message to share to offset such an empty message like that. Instead of being so focused, here, let's focus ourselves and those we come into contact with on eternal life. Jesus reminds us that this is the kind of gift that that comes to us, that in this life, sin finally then can't touch us anymore. It's this life that we have in Christ that the consequences of sin can't reach us any longer. Having this life brings us contentment because we know that we are in the loving hands of our God. And Jesus is the key, right? He's the key for everyone, the The crowd didn't get that yet, no. Many in our world don't understand it either, but Jesus lets the crowd know that he is and has received God's seal of approval. You know how it is on food sometimes. You get that seal of approval, maybe especially on meat, for instance, USDA, right? What does that tell you? Well, it tells you that that meat has gone through certain regulations and and is designed to say, this is safe to eat. Well, when Jesus was baptized, God gave Jesus 
a seal of approval. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And later on at Jesus' resurrection, there's Jesus, God's stamp of approval also in raising Jesus from the dead. This is the one I sent. This is the one who has done everything needed for salvation. With these words, Jesus was starting to get somewhere with this crowd. So they said to him, "Uh, what should we do to carry out the works of God? Okay, it's a start. The crowd was beginning to understand that this is about their spiritual lives. That was certainly a breakthrough, but their hearts were still far from the truth. They were still thinking of what they needed to do. That's a natural thing, friends, that you and I have, too, in our hearts, that we are constantly fighting, even though we know the truth that Jesus did it all and nothing we can do will add to that. We still have that nagging thought here and there that there must be something I can contribute. Our sinful nature wars against us, making us think that Our feeble works can do anything. Jesus quickly puts that to rest. This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. Life in God's kingdom has nothing to do with our works, does it? It has to do with the work of God, the work that he does for us, the work that he does in bringing us to himself, the work that he has accomplished through his Son, our Savior, through his suffering and death. We cannot choose to believe in God. God gives us that gift. God gives us faith in our hearts through his chosen means, through the gospel. Just when it seemed as if Jesus was getting somewhere, the crowd voiced An objection. They said to him, So what miraculous sign are you going to do that we may see it and believe you? What miraculous sign are you going to perform? Our fathers ate the man in the wilderness, just as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. It's almost comical, isn't it, that they're asking for a sign at this time so that they could believe? What about the changing water into wine? What about Jesus healing various individuals? What about the feeding of the 5,000 just yesterday? What about that? Well, with that latest miracle that they witnessed, they evidently undervalued it because what did they hearken to? They went back to the man of the Old Testament And you can almost hear them saying these words. Well, Jesus, yeah, we know you fed 5,000, but you know, you used bread, you used used those fish, and you just multiplied them. But guess what? Moses did something greater. He made it rain manna from heaven, the stuff that came to the earth that we were pick up every day and our ancestors were able to eat every day. It came from nothing. It came daily. So do something greater. Well, Jesus met their objections with a dose of reality. Amen, amen, I tell you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the real bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus is very quick to let them know that they're wrong. Moses wasn't the provider of manna. God was, and that bread from heaven was only a sign of something greater to come, a much greater bread that would come from in heaven, from heaven. Only that would be a bread that would endure forever. You know how food spoils after a while, after you don't eat it, right? It can get smelly in the fridge and that kind of thing. That was the same case for manna, too. 
They were only to take, and you heard it in the book of Exodus, they were to take enough manna for each day as it fell from heaven. If they would keep it an extra day, what would happen? It would spoil, it'd be unusable. It was only one day that they were able to take portions for two days. That was Friday. Friday they made sure that they had enough for Friday and Saturday because Saturday was the Sabbath. They were not to do any work on that day. Nor would God rain down that manna from heaven on that day. But even that manna would eventually spoil, wouldn't it, if they kept it too long. Whatever we have, manna, bread, whatever else we might eat, it doesn't last, does it? But there is bread that does last, a bread that comes down from heaven, the bread that gives life to the world. We want that bread. We need that bread. We join the crowd with Jesus to, in speaking to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread all the time. Now the crowd wasn't quite there yet in their understanding of what Jesus was talking about regarding this bread from heaven. They were like the Samaritan woman at the well who encountered Jesus, and Jesus says, I will give you the water of life so that you'll never thirst again. She was thinking about the water in which she dipped her bucket, that she wouldn't have to do that anymore, right? Oh, it went way beyond that, just as this goes way beyond the understanding of the crowd. And yet, Jesus thought they were ready to hear some shocking words. I am the bread of life, Jesus told them. The one who comes to me will never be hungry, and the one who believes in me will never be thirsty. Why are you here? Isn't it because you're hungry? Because you're thirsty? Humanistic songs like and concepts like imagine, they're not going to do it for us. Not at all. There's more. There's so much more. There's the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life. He alone gives us food that lasts. He alone assures us that we'll never go hungry. Never be thirsty. Satisfies all our needs. Provides for us through, by giving us life through the forgiveness of sins. So let's feast on that food every week and every day. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.